All right, friends, welcome back to this phase three obedience training. Super excited about what you've achieved, especially if you've gone through phases one and two. Now in phase three, we have completed the eight foundations for obedience, which means we are now ready to train. And friends, this lesson, lesson nine, is really where the rubber meets the road. If you are going to make the transition from the eight foundations of obedience into personal training for character in God's kingdom, you have to get this lesson right in your thinking. This is lesson nine, and it is titled The Command to Train. Bottom line, if you want to be holy in everything you do, if you want to obey the way God wants you to, you have to train. You must train. Without training, you will not experience kingdom obedience. You say, Jared, how can you tell me that I have to train? Well, obviously, because the Bible says so. First Timothy chapter four, Paul says to Timothy, he says, train to be godly. For physical training has some benefit, but training for godliness has benefit not only in this life, but also in the life to come. Guess what? And you've heard me say this over and over, but there are over 600 commandments in the Old Testament. There are over 1,000 of them. There's 1,050 commandments in the New Testament. We have a list of those at the end of the phase three book. But guess what? One of those commands from God to you and I is to train. God wants us to train to be godly. And friends, this is why this is something that you got to get your heads wrapped around because you can know what it means to be a disciple of Christ and you can know the eight foundations for obedience. But if you are not convinced that you have to train, you probably aren't going to do it because guess what? Training is not easy. Training is hard. I mean, when you look at athletes, when you look at people in the military, whatever the uh, context is, training isn't easy. It's always hard, but people do it because they're convinced that it is necessary. They see the prize at the end. They see uh, that this is the only means to achieving the goal that they have set before themselves. So therefore they train. And friends, if you and I want to be the kingdom citizen that God is calling us to be, we have to train. That's why it's commanded in the scripture. And the reason why I'm really going to stress this is because I think it's been lost in mainstream Christianity. Let me give you an analogy just to demonstrate how important this is and how easily we can get away from this simple yet powerful truth. Let's say that you wanted to be a baseball player. Okay. Uh, you just have your heart set on being part of a baseball team where you, the player, get up to bat, you hit the ball, you round the bases, and you score runs, and you win games. This is your dream. So you buy a uniform, you go out there, and you join a team, and you're so excited. And now it's the first day of practice, and you come ready to train, ready to practice, ready to learn how to win games. But instead, in that first day of practice, you don't get on the baseball field. You don't throw a ball or swing a bat. Instead, you learn the history of baseball. You show up and they say, today we're going to teach you the history of baseball. And you think, well, that's kind of interesting. I didn't think that the history of baseball would help me win games, but these are the coaches. And I guess that this is something that, you know, it would be kind of neat to learn the history of baseball. So you learn the history of baseball. It takes you weeks and weeks. Once you finally graduate from the history of baseball training, you're now ready to learn how to really grip the bat and hit the ball and score runs. But instead, they teach you the next phase of training is to learn how to make a bat and how to make a ball. So you learn how to go out and chop down a tree and make a bat. And you also learn how to make a ball out of who knows what. I have no idea what a baseball is made out of. But you learn these things, and what happens is, whereas at the beginning, when you first joined the baseball team, you expected to be trained to actually play the game and win, now you start to think, oh, I guess this is what it means to be a baseball player. You know everything about baseball, and you know everything about the uniform and the, and the uh, bat and the ball and the bases, and really, instead of getting out there and doing something that results in winning, it is replaced with head knowledge and you start to be convinced that maturity is about head knowledge, not actually being able to do something. Friends, this is what is happening by and large, in my personal opinion, in American Christianity. Is instead of seeing the touchdown or the goal as being holy and obeying and something that we actually produce through the lives we live, we have equated maturity with head knowledge. If you don't believe me, think about it. When you go up to someone, very often this is a conversation that happens in Christianity. We're talking about someone and we say, oh, that person is just so mature in their faith. And the evidence we give is their knowledge. We say, man, I mean, think about it. That person knows the Bible inside out. 
If you give them a reference, that man or that woman can quote the reference or quote the scripture. And very often that's what we do. And listen, there's nothing wrong with knowing the Bible, obviously. Now, there's, there's nothing wrong with memorizing scripture, obviously. That's very, very important. But likewise, there's nothing wrong with knowing the history of baseball. And there's nothing wrong with knowing how to make a bat and a ball. But guess what? That's not going to give you the runs. That's not going to help you hit the ball. And there's many Christians who know all of this information. And there's nothing wrong with that information. But what they need to know is void or lacking to a very, usually a very large degree. And that is how to actually live a life of holiness. And friends, this is the point. To do that, you must train. And this is what we're going to learn how to do in the weeks to come. But if you are not convinced that you're supposed to train, you probably won't do it because guess what? It's hard. You have to see that this is a command from God.